Welcome to another episode of the Phoenix Rising Podcast. I am your host, Lisa Hillier, and I am so grateful that you are here with me as I navigate and explore these topics that fill my heart and that I have a deep curiosity around. And I love receiving your comments on the Spotify episodes. I just don't know if I can reply, if I can respond back. Um, If somebody knows if I can respond back and reply, please let me know. But I haven't figured out how to do that. So I love receiving the comments, the answers to the questions of what you thought of the episode. Um, Yeah, and most of the comments really land with me as well. So I absolutely love receiving those. And the reviews are amazing to receive as well. They really fill me up. And lots of moving and shifting has been happening over here. I have a slight cold. You can probably hear it in my voice. But I have moved on to my dream property in Roberts Creek. And I'm going to be sharing my testimony on the podcast around that really soon. So I love how it all came together uh, in God's timing and after I really did a few things. So I'm excited to share. And there is an Airbnb link that I'll be sharing in the show notes If you want to come stay here, it's absolutely magical and I can't share it. I can't wait to share it with everybody that feels called to uh, come hang out here on the coast. And so today I have, I have Katharina Grace on the show with me and Katharina Grace is a mentor devoted to guiding women into restoring and deepening their relationship to God as a foundation for union. Her work is in service to the remembrance of our inherent worth through rooting into beloved identity as a cherished daughter of God and in devotion to the heart of Christ. The foundational part of Katharina's work is about cultivating safety in our own bodies and deepening our capacity to self-source in order to meet the masculine from a place of self-responsibility, maturity, and the deeper holding that only God's love can provide. When we begin to move past the layers of superficial surrender and into submission to God's will and the perfection of his timing, we begin to live and thrive from our true feminine design and the deeper fulfillment coming from resting in our receptive nature. And Katharina is also supporting women in business. After years of doing it the masculine way, her path led to walking beside women as they share their gifts from a place of embodied co-creation with God. And I can't wait to dive into this episode with you. There is so much softness and surrender in the words that are spoken by Katharina Grace. So can't wait to dive in. As always, please check out the affiliate links in the show notes if you want to support the podcast financially. It allows an income for me to create this podcast each and every week for you. And as well, there is a link in the show notes to my bison tallow products that are so, so good. The bison beauty is my favorite. I swear it's taken years off my skin and there's tallow soap and hand cream and body cream. And they're just filled with so much, so many nutrients and just so much medicine and goodness. So definitely check that out. And now let's dive into the show with Katharina. Okay, welcome to the podcast, Katerina. I'm so excited for this conversation and you're in Bali, so just starting your day. I'm here just ending my day and I love that we can connect in this way for these really in-depth conversations and that we can just let it flow and see where it goes. So to start, what has been the journey that has brought you to the work that you're offering the world today? Hi, Lisa, and all those who are listening. Where to start? (laughs) I've always been a seeker of God. I haven't called God God as I do right now, but it was always, looking back, I was always seeking God. And I think it's just such a primal, natural human thing to seek something that is bigger than us, to something to turn to and, and posture our heart towards to. And so... I've truly explored all the (laughs) teachings and lineages and practices and teachers and gurus and guides and all the things that one can probably imagine under the planet. And it was such 
so needed to where I'm at right now. And my work now is supporting women in restoring and deepening their relationship to God and Christ. And so all of these lineages and teachings that I was exploring before and fully immersing myself in, that was something I look back and observe with just so much fascination how the moment something opened for me, let's say Tantra or Kundalini Yoga or the Path of Bhakti devotional chanting, like every time that that door would open, I would fully immerse myself in it as if nothing else exists with, with fullness and totality. And at some point the energy would have moved through and I felt complete and I felt I received what I needed to receive. And then it felt quite easy to move on and close that chapter without making it wrong, without needing to make a story out of it, but with receiving with gratitude what I got to receive and moving on. And so the next something would open for me. And eventually last year, this this full exhale and deepening in my relationship to God began through a very close sister. Her name is Nina, Way of Grace here on Instagram. And she's been a beautiful sister and mentor as well on this journey to deepening my relationship to God and really moving away from from religion, but into relationship. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm also observing so much collectively in the feminine and the masculine as well is returning to what does it actually mean to have a relationship to God? Not what society told us, not what I was told when I was a child and went to church, but what is what gets to emerge when I open to this truly intimate relationship. And so at an accident three, almost three months ago, a uh, motorbike accident here in Bali. And as these things do that bring us so close into the body, so deeply into the body, they open us. And that was another layer of my relationship to God and Christ was I felt the Holy Spirit just move through me. And it is not something I could ever really put into words or describe. I feel it's something that when the time comes, we experience. It's not a peak experience to seek. That's why I'm still quite mm. hesitant with fully sharing it because it's not about, it sounds big and majestic and grand for the one who feels it, but it might be very subtle for others. Mm. And for me, it was. It, it felt like it was a buildup throughout the last year of coming closer to God and him calling me into a lot of solitude last year, a lot of isolation, a lot of contemplation and stillness a lot of cleansing and this is really what begins happening is this process of purification as we open because we we, we all want to live in the state of surrender in some way right but what does it truly mean to surrender our will to his will and so all the mm -hmm. stuff that comes up on this journey i i feel like got to sit with and then the accident happening and calling me even deeper. I couldn't move for two months. I just recently started walking again. And so it's been layered. And yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just pause here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, was there a catalyst that shifted you towards God? Like there was there a desire in your heart mm. that turned you to face God? It's been gradual. I cannot name an event or I cannot name a specific something that happened that made it clear. It can be that. I know it is that for many people. It was for me gradual and it, it was very connected to this natural pull. I always fell towards union. And there's many terms that exist around it, sacred union, um, divine union, um, which really essentially is placing God at the center of our relationship. And these were teachings and just an awareness that came to me around five years ago. And through, through Jesus and Ma Mary Magdalene, and that sparked my, my curiosity. I was like, why does this love feel so, so special, so activating, so yeah, deeply activating in my system? And this is how how it how it all started and and started like trickling in, into my awareness more and more and um the other pieces through my sister my blood sister actually she's been walking with Christ for over 25 years but <laughs> you know not the way she would speak about it would always be so repulsive to me um kind of just like pushing and trying to press press faith onto me and so mm -hmm. it it pushed me further away so 
it's been quite yeah. beautiful to reconnect with her and also um, see where where I feel like once we taste what we see as the truth, right, what we feel like this completely and entirely changed my life and created so much fulfillment and nourishment, we want everyone to experience it. But it is an art to to, to emanate that and to invite people into this this energy without this is the ultimate truth. And if you don't do this, something really bad will happen because this is the, the spirit of religion, which, create, which creates separation. And so religion and relationship are two very, very, very different things. And Can they coexist though? Like, can you have can relationship be in relation. within? Yeah. Can you be in relationship within re religion? Yes. I, yeah. The religious spirit also asks for relationship, right? Some form of relationship, but the foundation of that relationship That's what it's really about is where does it come from? Does it come from fear? Does it come from if I don't do the right thing, if I don't pray enough, God will punish me, which is, and I, I still have residue of that. I feel it's very, very deep to see God as a punitive force who's just waiting for me to fuck up and punish me. And as we walk, intimately walk with, with God, we, we come to know his true nature. Mm. And his true nature is is that of of a loving father who sometimes withholds, sometimes doesn't give us what we want. But I see it as the the loving withholding of a father who knows better. Mm. Yeah, I, I just find it interesting sometimes, like the conversation around religion, because it can be seen as like this punishing God. But then it's like, it's like, is that God or is that the human that might be spreading that message, right? Like, I, yeah. it's so like, because depending on what church you went to or what denomination, you might not have received that message that if you mess up, like God's going to punish you. It might be like a father, you know, like an earthly father where it's like, I'm going to stir you in this direction. My love is unconditional. I'm always here, but I might be a little upset with you if you do something that's very sinful, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm just kind of like finding. Yeah. And even my... that, that piece that you said, I might be a little upset with you. God is not. He won't ever be. I can even go off path. I can even explore other other things that are might not be of God and still he would welcome and embrace me the moment I, I posture my heart towards him so fully and openly. So it requires for us to look at our relationship to our earthly fathers and separate. And this is why there is a lot of charge the moment we speak of God as father, mm -hmm. because we naturally will associate father with the earthly father so we will be asked to to separate these and to come to truly know god as the heavenly father which will inevitably also create so much healing and repair in our relationship to our earthly fathers through forgiveness primarily and coming to know god's perfect love it truly is mm. perfect there is no there's no trace of the the earthly father in god as father Mm. And I know this Something... is very, very deep. Like <laughs> we're already starting <laughs> at quite a <laughs> deep entry point. It feels like these conversations usually go a little deep and quick. And it's just been something that I've been sitting with because it's like, you know, there are like a Christian path is a narrow path, we'll say, right? Like there's there are sins and there's rules and there's things that you you know, kind of stay within. And I've been sitting with, it's like, is that wrong? Like if we stayed within that path, would it be for our ultimate good in the end? You know, and it's not like God's going to punish us in any sense or Jesus, but it's like, this is the way, like the way of your highest good. Does that make sense? Yeah. I feel, or what's coming as a response is, is, my personal experience where when I want to keep it wide, the path wide, it's not always in service to me. And we might perceive the narrowing down as 
sacrifice, which in, in some ways it can feel like that initially, but essentially it's an, it's, it's serving me. And I'm going to give an example in, in a moment. It's not that like God doesn't get anything out of anything. Like it's, it's for me. Um, posturing my heart towards him is actually for me. Surrendering, which is a journey in itself to his will instead of my will is for me. It's serving me in the first place. And let's say that the, the narrowing down, what comes in ex as an example is a verse in the Bible where God says, you shouldn't have any other gods beside me. He's a jealous God. And from coming, having experienced Bhakti and Tantra and Kundalini Yoga as just a few, along with other sub-lineages, there's gods and deities that are being worshipped. And initially I was like, I can still go to devotional chanting sessions in the community and still chant other gods' names and still know where my heart belongs. So that's how it started. It didn't feel correct and right. And this is this will be my invitation is to continuously check in what feels right and correct for me in this very moment. And it can be very fluctuating and changing day by day, moment by moment. But I feel the radical path of like, I have to eliminate everything right now unless I'm not being received by God. Again, the religious spirit of separation and of punishment. This is not how God works. God is a very, is, is, is loving and gentle and, and, yeah, of an essence that is so embracing and, and correcting. And with having experienced these other, other lineages and truly giving my life force, my energy to other gods, I really sat with that peace. What does that mean for me? Why is this specific verse coming to me in the very beginning of my journey to God? And I've realized that initially it feels like sacrifice. Initially it feels like the narrowing down that I have to give something up. And this is what Jesus says. He says, you, you will give up a lot, but what you will gain as far is beyond comprehension. Mm -hmm. And it is what gets to arise when we become one pointed, when we, and this is the trust, right? We want, we want God, God's provision. We want to trust God. We want to walk with God, but am I willing to say, but you're my only God and you, I trust so fully that I don't need anything else and anyone else. And it shows a relationship with trust. And it shows a relationship with control. So why am I attached to still praise other gods? Just as, a, as an example of the narrowing down. Why am I still, why do I need my altar with all of these objects? Why do I need certain symbols in my life and where are certain symbols that are not of the frequency um, that I'm now opening my heart to? It's just, it's just this curious inquiry. That's what it really is. Instead of it's not okay, not allowed, more so why do I feel desire to either engage in that or participate in that or have that or hold on to that? Yeah. What's it like in Bali? This is, I've never been to Bali, but I would understand from my understanding, like it's quite yoga based. <laughs> There's quite a spiritual community. Yeah. That's all like breath healing sessions, plant all medicine journeys, yoga, all that kind of stuff. How is it being in Bali? Yeah, it's at some point I had a call with my sister the other day. I'm like, I feel I'm being given this assignment to hold the field of God and Christ in a field where there is nobody in my physical direct field that I'm engaging with who who walks the way I do. And it's and it's not even about that because I feel this is truly this is the reason I was, and I'm calling it for lack of a better term, new age spirituality. This is why I explored all of this in the past. So I have deep understanding and it's not for me to now say all of this is wrong. And I'm in a place that geographically, physically, the land emanates. It's, it's Hindu and Muslim um, people here. And it is about, I mean, when I'm rooted in my relationship to God, I don't need to constantly try everyone else to, to walk the same way. I pray. And if I notice distortion, if I notice anything that I feel, oh, I, I, I pray, I just send a prayer, God work their hearts. And, and if I am meant to speak, give me the right words. And it happens more frequently recently that I do speak. And it's an art. 
and this is how Christ was speaking too and, and sharing his message was love and truth. And it was a blending of merging of the most compassionate, loving way and the sort of truth when needed. And I feel this is what we're being all called to to walk as and and engage with each other. And so being here in Bali, I'm I'm so fulfilled and rooted in that intimate relationship that it's okay that it's not I don't I don't source that with other people. Um and I'm just aware in what I participate and don't participate in. And I believe there's a reason why I'm here. There's a reason I'm in a community that thrives of all of the things that I used to choose for myself and don't feel resonance with anymore. It's just widening my heart in so much compassion, so much compassion, because I get it. I get it. I've done it. And two, I experience a lot of curiosity from people. The more I share about it online, the more people from the community also see my work are curious recently I, I was asked the same question what's what was your journey like to come to this very moment that you're in right now and that to me is the most exciting is that openness it's a curiosity is um again not not meeting with separation but with with openness and yeah it's so non-linear right essentially mm. yeah yeah I do believe that God brings us to exactly where we are for a reason, like even geographically and all of that kind of stuff. When I moved to the coast, I thought I'd be holding new moon circles and, you know, all kinds of things around the equinoxes and the solstices and yoga nidra. I used to teach yoga nidra. And then I came here and Christ pursued me pretty quickly. And none of that is a part of my life here, but there's a completely different community that came forward and so it's like it's all it was all for a reason and a purpose yeah. you know yeah so with that relationship and religion what does it look like to cultivate a relationship with god and to heal the relationship with god as like masculine figure hmm. what first comes is there's no rules you will know mm. when you know when when the the fire in the heart, the calling in the heart is there, the desire is there, God will inevitably, undeniably reveal himself to us. I believe that. And it's just as simple as asking. I think we also have to actively ask. We have to actively vocalize our desires in some way. We can write them down too, but some some forward movement from us invitation mm -hmm. to invite God into our hearts and maybe even declare, I want to walk with you. Show me what it means to walk with you. I'm, I'm curious. I have questions. I have fear. I have a lot of resistance actually too. So bringing everything to God that is present and, and that truly is, that's the same attitude we bring into romantic relationship is here's everything here's all of me here is my fullness and and that is being revealed over time right with as we build trust as we nourish and feed and nurture that relationship and in this context what's been very present with friends sisters peers is how the feminine often holds this entitlement of like well god isn't showing up in my life or why isn't showing god showing up in this way i surrendered this thing and it didn't work out for me mm. and this yeah the, the refinement that we're being called into in our, our maturity to understand that it is a relationship am i willing to give am i willing to create that space am i willing to sit in in nothingness because i believe that god too speaks when we're in stress and in in distraction but to truly know how god's voice feels in our system we have to be willing to create time and stillness and I think this is such, this was very difficult for me. And still sometimes this to realize the moment I sit down to have quiet time with God, it's like all sorts of things pop up, all the things I didn't get to do, um, random things that I didn't do of my to-do list, uh, phone no notifications popping up, 
seeing a hair in the corner that I now, right now, have to clean up, like all the things. That <laughs> it's beautiful to <clears throat> sit in the urge mm. and let breath wash through the urge and that acknowledgement of like, wow, how, how much I'm constantly seeking, how much I'm resisting mm. the still space. And like my accident did, I couldn't not be still. I physically had to be still. And it was so difficult in the beginning to see how at this point I felt already I was being so worked and refined by God and spent a lot of time in, in solitude. And there's layers to it and there's layers to our distraction and to also know he loves us through that. He's mm-hmm. welcoming us through that. If I grab my phone and do the thing, he he's he's not already walked away and turned away and closed the door that moment. We can always return, but it's it's serving me in the first place, right? Again, to it's clearing the noise. Yeah. Yeah. That relationship with God when you spoke to it, it feels like back in the new age world. I don't really know of another term. I know I'm struggling it. with it too. <laughs> I need to figure out one, but it would be like going to your tarot cards or your oracle deck or the astrologer or the psychic or the list goes on. And a learning curve for me was like not going to any of that, just simply going to my relationship with God, like taking it to him. And it's so simple, but I think our humanness, or at least my humanness, likes the distraction of all the other stuff because when it's simple, it's just right here, you know, like it's just yeah, this moment as opposed to like, well, this is going to happen in the future. So I need to do this and all that. Like there's just such a simplicity to it that um feels so peaceful now. But in the beginning, I really struggled with not calling all my people, getting all my spiritual yeah. guides to help assist me and all that kind of stuff. So that relationship, it's like, that is your one. The word true is coming up. And I mean, that is your true source of guidance and love. And yeah, yeah. just you know, <laughs> where you go. Oh, so much resonance in what you're saying. And again, the narrowing down, initially it feels like such a sacrifice. Like I'm God is punishing me. He's taking things away from me. And as we walk with him, oh, there's so much to say to this. Tarot cards everywhere and all the time. And just as a, sim- just as a symbol, as an example of how society is nowadays, seeking the quick fix and walking with the Lord is not a quick fix. It is... There's such a beautiful devotion that we get to cultivate within ourselves that with time as we mature turns into submission. And I know this is triggering, can be triggering, maybe triggering to some because of our relationship to submission in the wrong ways in the past. And I had a moment with a sister recently I was like, you know, the Bible is the OG Oracle deck. (laughs) Like, if I have a question, if I have an ask, if I want to know God's answer, sometimes I I pray over it and I open my Bible and I see what comes up. And very often it's what I need to hear and what I need to read. And I remember she, she came home and she texted me. She's like, would you open a page in the Bible for me? And it's a friend who, who's just opening, just very subtly opening. And it was initially I was so excited and it was so beautiful to feel her desire. And then I could feel the deeper layer of it. And I'm like, I can't open a page for you. It's for us to cultivate that relationship. It's for us to to sit with that with the scripture. It's for us to get a feeling. I mean, even the physical texture of it. How does that even feel to to have God's word in my hand? To say, I walk with you, and what gets to be revealed as we walk, 
as yeah. opposed to what's in there. Tell me. Hmm. When you spoke to submission, it feels like, or felt like that, um, you know, when you pray or when I pray to Jesus, it's like, if it's your will, like, if it's your will, if it's God's will and that like ultimate surrender where it's like, if you don't want it for me, God, I don't want it for me. And it's, it's so fully letting go of control because the human aspect wants to be like, like, nope, this is what's for me. Even like a home I was, I was praying and I had to, people praying with me about my home. And it's like, if it's your will, Jesus, but there was this part of me that's like, well, what if it's not his will? What if I don't get it? And this is like, my humanness is like, this is perfect. And so it's like that, no, like ultimately letting it go to the timing of God and to ultimately, if it's his, his will, mm-hmm. not mine. Mm-hmm. What if I don't get it is, is this beautiful posture and attitude, not from making ourselves small and less and insignificant, but from just knowing. I mean, if I look back at my life, all the things I wanted and I perceived at that moment as the highest and best and most glorious thing ever turned out not to be. And so I'm grateful that God didn't give me what I wanted when I wanted it. And it's hard depending on how close something is to our hearts. And this is something I spoke about very recently in an email that re- where I received so much response from women. And it was about a conversation I had with my sister and I'm, I'm not in partnership. And, I, and she, she said to me, would you still tr- trust God's plan if he didn't have a man for you? Would you still trust that this was his highest will for you, that he could fill all the longings and all the things that I tried to be satisfied and fulfilled by a man? And she didn't say that because she actually believes that, but she said that to call me back to center and to where I truly belongs to. And initially I felt so much resistance and I was like, no, what do you mean? Like, of course I know, I know he has a man for me. And it was like this big response. I couldn't receive that question initially. And Mm -hmm. this, this moment turned into a couple of weeks of deep contemplation and letting this question truly work in me. If union wasn't in, his plan for me? Could I still trust that this is his highest will? That this too is his provision? And I'm still on a journey with this. <laughs> I've got a whole entire surrender. And because I do have a strong knowing that it is in my path, that I will be in partnership, that I will be a mother. And I have to surrender though and submit to his timing. And when that will be, and still the peace is working in me. And what if union is not in my path? Can I still trust he who is at the source of everything will fulfill everything so deeply and so entirely? And I think the the reason women in my field felt so much resonance because it speaks on our biggest fear. It's our primal, most ancient urge is to unite and to really sit with that. And it, it called me into the deeper layers of my own longing, which, you know, before that was like, yeah, transform your longing into pleasure or into creation or some sounding practice and tears would sometimes come. But that time I touched despair. I was like, God, do you even have a man for me? And so I was being called. He wanted me so close. He wanted me to be his first, his his bride. So the, the bride of God is another term that's very present in the field right now what does it mean to be the bride of god it's the eternal walk with him to say i'm yours first and maybe forever and only and so again this is a piece i'm still with and i think is is of of such profound nature that it's it's meant to take some time to fully metabolize and that was my recent calling into submission Mm. That one keeps on coming up in conversations that I've been having on the podcast and I get resistance just when, like when you said that about like, can I be on the, on my own, you know, maybe that is not my, his calling for me and I get resistance because I think that's the question that I've been sitting with as well. Like, where is my man? God, like, you know, I've had previous relationships. I have a 23 year old daughter and all of that, but it's like, where's the man that you want me to walk with? for the rest of my life. 
And then this idea that it might never happen feels like this collapse almost. And so, yeah. It's a season. It's like- I feel it is a season. <laughs> I feel ultimately the, the, this, the pulse of longing it, God wouldn't place a longing inside of our hearts if it wasn't for us. Mm. And I'm grateful to have this season of walking only with him because it will, the way, how this will pour into the relationship I will be in is, is beyond what I even can sense in this moment. But my walk with him, with this this moment of, he is he is he is whom I walk with right now. How how that will impact a relationship, and so our walk doesn't end when we come into a relationship, right? It's it only gets deeper and transforms, and I believe that's when we're truly, <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. So with that, like complete submission to God, and I know it. It's like the next layer. Is that fair to say of what submission looks like? Or do you get to a place where you're fully surrendered and have fully submitted to God? I think it's moments. Mm, yeah. Moments I can touch when I'm so close to God, when I have a holy to myself and I just sing belt out worship songs and I'm like really in the state. I can touch, I can touch this place in me that is in full. It's like this giving in, not giving up, giving in. Mm. Yeah. And it's sometimes hard as, as a very attuned woman, woman to know what is my intuition and what is my sensing and what is the truth that I feel pulsating in my being and what is my fantasy. How much of that is actually my sensing that he is close and how much of that is my longing embodied. And that, again, calls me into, I feel so many things, so many feelings, so many sensations. And I, I, I offer them as a prayer to you, God. May this, may this pour into what is your will. And it's a journey. It is a journey. And some days it's, it comes easy. And some days it's hard to access yeah. that. Yeah. For women or men as well, a lot of people have God trauma, they'll call it, where they've been hurt by the church or so many different variations Mm -hmm. of that. How would you call them to start their walk with God, um, to heal that place in them that fears God Mm -hmm. so much? Mm -hmm. Similar to what I shared previously inviting him, inviting him and inviting him to truly reveal his true nature to us. And it will come yeah. through people, through experiences, through the mysterious ways that he works because he wants us all close. And so he will make it happen. It's not even our work to actively work for it. Yes, to create the space. Yes, to to invite him into our hearts. But I think part of reconnecting and restoring our relationship to God is also coming into the posture of exhaling and the posture of leaning back and to see how does he want to reveal himself as we take on the posture of, of reception. It's quite actually quite a feminine posture to take on. And that in itself is an initiation. And every time contraction arises from religious trauma it's to ask is this what was told what i was told about god is this what i have come to believe or is this who truly god is is revealing himself as and it's not going to be always clear but our body will reveal so much to us because God, God's voice is always ease. God's voice is always love and peace and an exhale and harmony. And so whenever I, I notice contraction, especially around receiving God as the Father and therefore 
softening into my identity as a daughter. Every time I would feel contraction, I would ask myself, is this, is this what I was told? Is this something coming from my earthly father? Or is this actually truly God's nature? And rarely it is God's nature. And so it's, again, this curious inquiry. Where does that come from? And I think initially it might feel like a lot of work because there is going to be so much to unwind from the system. But the pace at which God works is also very nonlinear. I believe God is the only one who can work in the quantum field. <laughs> Not our manifestation, but truly God. He, mm. he works in miraculous ways. And I believe the moment we open, he, he will show up. He, want, he, he wants nothing more than that. It's like he's waiting. He's just waiting with all of the goodness that he has to offer us. And the moment we say, I'm ready, he will show up. Mm. Yeah, it's that being pursued by God. In my experience, it's not really subtle. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a knowing, like a deep knowing that, Christ is pursuing me in this moment and has, yeah, just pursuing a relationship. There was part of me that like was going to say has something for me, but he does love that unconditional love of the father. What did that feel like with the Holy Spirit coming through you in your accident? Was it, yeah. It wasn't in the moment of the accident. It was a couple weeks later. It was, and I've already been walking with God and have opened to Christ and started reading the scripture. But it was in the state between still, still being asleep, kind of waking, being aware of coming into the body. And it was a moment where I felt it was a physical, visceral experience. It wasn't an image. It wasn't a vision. It wasn't words. It wasn't a story. It was a feeling. This is how I often dream in feeling. And a feeling of deep peace, homecoming, love that, that goes beyond, beyond everything. And a true, true safety, this deep comfort of being in this body and being exactly where I am. And before that, it's been challenging being in Bali. It's a very charged land, a lot of prayer, a lot of energy, a lot of stuff around. And it's a lot for my nervous system. It's not how I grew up. I didn't grow up in the tropics. And so the sounds, the immensity of energy that's around started feeling quite challenging for my system. And I realized, oh, wow. The more I root into my feminine, into my womanhood, the more I mature, the more containment I need, the more safety I need, the more holding I need. And so as this, this presence, this love poured in, I it was a knowing it is Christ. It was a knowing. There was no doubt. It was just a knowing. And so the buildup was very subtle over around nine months. Of, of feeling, getting to know, opening, inviting, and then ultimately this visceral experience that, that was just undeniable and I believe continues to come every time I, I'm being moved by a song. I connect very deeply to God through song, through worship music. I have a playlist with over 100 something songs. So that would be my invitation to begin receiving music that that pours from the hearts of people who are moved by the Holy Spirit. And it 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 does touch me very deeply. And so throughout these weeks after I just felt this immense protection and like nobody can fuck with me. <laughs> I'm just so protected. I'm so good. I'm ah uh, and with that it became very easy it's like my my lens was being polished and cleared and I would see more clearly what needs to leave and what needs to go, what needs to be purified out of my field. And a lot of time in solitude from just wanting to be in that energy. And, and yeah. 
and it comes it comes in waves right it's like once once we touch that it it comes spontaneous i this is also words that keep coming in the scripture is spontaneous or sudden sudden comes a lot is out of the blue seemingly and that we we know we just know <laughs> when it when it comes are there any scriptures that come to mind that um are like guides for women to mm. really connect to their true essence Romans 8 which describes the Holy Spirit moving through us and further towards the end of Romans 8 how he gives to us so graciously when we when we receive him as father he wants to give he wants to provide and I just read it yesterday, so it's still very alive. There was a verse about creation. God intended to make creation subject to frustration. It was his will. Like we're meant to feel frustrated without him in our lives. Like we're meant to not to feel like things don't really quite work and we're trying and controlling and it's not. And he made that on purpose. So as we turn to him, we experience that fulfillment and liberation. And it was a verse where I was like, wow, I never heard it that like precise and on point that he intended for us to feel so much frustration at when we are separate to him. And he 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 made it on purpose. <laughs> and there's yeah, just so much beauty. Yeah, Romans 8. Hmm. It's almost like that nudge back, like a father that's always been waiting. Mm -hmm. That frustration can be like a nudge to turn our hearts right. back to him. And it created so much, a, a feeling of relief <clears throat> for me because I'm like, oh, I wasn't meant to feel fulfilled. <laughs> As in the frustration was rightful and mm -hmm. had its place and... I would always think something's not right within me because I keep seeking and feeling this constant dissatisfaction. And I think to an extent, in some way, we all do. It's part of human nature. But I felt like I really felt it more deeply than everyone else. <laughs> so when I read that, Paris, I was like, ah, oh, so beautiful. And it shows how the Bible is the living word of God. It communicates with us. I was resisting to open towards reading the Bible for a while. And as you were mm -hmm. asking previously, what would you suggest to, to people opening or, or wanting to walk more closely with God? It's, it's to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I would say that. It feels so quite big for me to say it in this moment. I don't think I've ever vocalized it in this way. And especially interpretations, like you can just Google that verse that you read and there's going to be so much that comes up because it is cryptic sometimes. It is not very clear to us, um, depending on which translation we have. And so many words that are can be received and perceived in a distorted way. What just comes is fear of God, fear of God. Hmm. It's initially like, no, I don't want to fear fear God, but it's 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 ancient language. The fear of God is is respect, is is reverence, is that quality that we bring to him as we submit, as you know better. That is fear of God. It's not literally to be fearful of God. It it means something different in the context of the Bible. And so mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to inquire deeper and really sit with that, look up um interpretations, the meaning of these verses, um, to, to truly receive um, how God wants to speak to us. Yeah. And that fear of God, it's it doesn't feel like you're going to receive the wrath of God or like huge punishment if you 
don't fear God, but it, it kind of comes back to that keeping you in that more like contained path. If you fear God, but I, I 100% resonate with what you said. Like, it's not like, like a fear, like you're cowering to him. It's more like, uh, your way is better than my way. And so I'll hmm. respect your way as opposed to like, yeah, that fearful nature. Does that make sense? Yeah, what I'm trying exactly. to say? Yeah. 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 Like I'm not going to hide from you or yeah. Yeah. You spoke earlier in the conversation to kind of going from the next thing to the next thing and like just knowing, oh, I can close that door. I'll close that door. Like to Kundalini, to Tantra, all the things. Um, does it feel like there's a door to close once you've come into close relationship with God? <laughs> I sat with that too. I don't think so because it is a very different experience physically, somatically, viscerally. And that I have never had before. And that is to me the feeling of true arrival and truth. Yeah. Whenever I would chant to various gods and deities and other chapters of my life, I might be moved. I might feel it in my heart, but there was a resistance. There was a resistance towards praising these these deities and gods it it never felt true i did it i participated it, it felt good at that time because i haven't yet known god in christ in the way i do right now now looking back it was rightful resistance because there there was something greater there was something that was more true and and is true full stop nothing that that comes beyond that in this very moment it's it's fully and entirely part of me and I cannot imagine <laughs> stepping out of this relationship that gives me so much that calls me into my maturity like nothing else ever did in the past. I mean, even the aspect of God as father, I'm not being confronted with that when I chant to an Indian deity. Right. There's so much in our relationship to God, the, the narrowing of the path. No one talks about that in other lineages. I mean, they do as in like, this is the only way. But the, the maturity piece, mm. that's really what's getting me is I'm, I'm becoming better through walking mm. with God and better than I have with anything else I've ever explored because it is confronting at times, because it is calling me into, into staying with it. And, and this, this true devotion that we only get to touch when we stay, it's like in relationship, when we stay, when things get difficult, when we stay, when I don't feel God, when, when I stay, even though I haven't felt his presence, when I stay, when things don't go my way, when I stay, when my longing consumes me and I'm desperate for the thing I truly, really want. And do I still stay and say, I trust this is this is part of it. I just cannot see it yet. Life will only ever make sense backwards. And that's how mm -hmm. it's always been. Yeah. When you were speaking to that like home sense of like not thinking that there's a door with Jesus, with God, that home, I it resonated a lot because I used to travel a ton. Like I've traveled the world and it would always be like the next place, the next place. It was almost like I was constantly searching for something, constantly seeking something. And it hasn't been, or that was always my life up until this walk with Christ, where it's like, I have nowhere that I have to go. Like it's right here, like home within you know, exactly where I am. It, it was almost like there's all these threads always like the more of a scattered feeling. And then it's like, whew, like in this moment, just landed, fully landed mm -hmm. um, is what it feels like. So there, the seeking's gone, except there is a seeking to want to know God more, like, and read the Bible more and just like dive into that mm -hmm. more. And but that's not, yeah going anywhere. 
Yeah. And it's so insatiable, beautifully insatiable, mm. that wanting to know God more and what you're what you've just shared about your journey and the constant traveling and seeking. I feel I'm at the end of that. So it's mm-hmm. very alive for me what you're describing is I feel the past five years have been that for me. And there was always a underlying desire for home and and permanence. And it wasn't the time. And I've always felt and I still hold this knowing that my home ultimately will be created with my partner, my future partner. And so while he's not here, so it's just this in-between state of it doesn't feel rightful to create my home. It doesn't feel right to just choose a place on the map and say, here, I'm going to move. Here, I'm going to create my home. It feels like a together project and and holding this this knowing while also creating what I truly desire in this moment as much as I can. And having found such this deep sense of home within Christ that it actually doesn't matter where I am geographically anymore as much. That's, that was my recent deep yeah, revelation that it doesn't matter where I am. And I feel this this year will be a lot of stillness and time with God. And it truly does not matter. Hmm. Where do you think your resistance to the Bible came from initially? Seeing it as this old dusty book that is so not relevant because it comes from an ancient time where people were different and how would it even apply to me today and resonate with me it was just didn't make sense and even the word bible you know it's oh, <laughs> all the things and and then being truly blown away by how alive the word is mm. Mm. Yeah. And from my understanding, not, uh, I have not read the whole Bible yet. I have read some of it, but it's like that, those words that you use, like the word is alive. And even like the same word reveals itself to you in different layers and different textures each time over. Like it's so deep is the word that's coming to mind. Like there's so much Mm -hmm. depth in that yeah, yeah we can read a verse over and over again and there will be something new that will be revealed to us it's fascinating and it's it's fascinating how people back then dealt with the same things that we deal with right now mm. yeah seeking the higher worries about money finances purpose love <laughs> it was always present it's always been present and humanity is, is repeating itself all the time. And therefore the word is still alive. And yes, it does require correct interpretation, not the distorted interpretation of religion. Yeah. And that too, we, we can begin forming a relationship to, to the scripture, to, to God through the scripture and same prayer show me the way through your word show me what i need to see and read and receive yeah where do you see humanity going we're kind of at this interesting time Mm -hmm. on the planet big question yeah (laughs) Mm. more and more a return to both men and women returning to their original template and design, Mm. who we are meant to be, how we are meant to operate and function in the world and move through the world and serve as well. I feel more people are coming into union, men and women, union within with God, union within community. Mm. For me, it's even recent co-creation with gorgeous women i'm tired of doing marketing on my own it's so much work (laughs) i just realized how what a blessing to be in union in this way as well Mm. and it it has felt as this this it's just not exciting anymore to do things on our own in all the realms 
Yeah. And it begins with with the union within, which is the path that we walk with God. So more, I, I see it in my field, people who I never thought would open to faith and walking this path are. And it's just it an inevitable, it's yeah. like, yeah, this, this energy that just comes down to earth and it's inexplainable, it's undeniable, <laughs> it's here, it's present. Yeah, yeah and, and through that, those who are still so attached to the worldly, to the material, to egoic ways of being will be very challenged and and for them, miracles are available too. Yeah, it's that turning your heart towards God that you've spoken about. What does that original template of a woman look like? Mm. Big question too. <laughs> mm. It's interesting. My my response is first physically, like my body just needs to to remember that. How does it feel? And I I intuitively lean back, and it's that lean back posture of a reception of a soft belly. It starts in our body, a soft belly feeling breath come through our hearts, awareness of our womb, our cervix, a throat. It's slowing down in speech as I do. I, I'm just speaking what comes, right? It, it starts yeah. as we drop in. It's realizing our provision that we're already provided for because so much of that which is against our nature comes from our belief that we're not provided for. Mm. The masculinized way of being in women, thinking we have to do it all on our own and that asks us, us to root into our identity as a daughter of God as and, and receiving him as father. And that in itself is is a whole journey. <laughs> I'm just saying it as it comes, but I'm aware this is this is huge. And it was a deep journey for me because when I, the, the moment I, I, I started resting in my identity as a daughter that I'm loved, cherished, provided for, loved perfectly, perfectly mm -hmm. by the one who is perfect by nature so much of my striving and reaching for achievements and identity, sourcing identity and worth from who am I being seen as in the world? What am I doing? How much money I'm making? All of the things started crumbling and it was difficult and liberating. And I still have residue of that because it's deep, <laughs> it's deep, deep stuff. And that's when I feel like I'm more and more resting in my design and it's I'm on a journey with this and it's mm -hmm. being revealed to me every day and it's resting in the exhale of all is well mm -hmm. all is well all is already good all is taken care of not just as a moment because externally everything's perfect and the house is clean and the things are paid and salary just came and but just waiting for the next thing to fall away fall apart or, or something that needs tending again but to rest permanently in the state of all is well as mm -hmm. as a posture not because all is well externally but because i walk with the most high who who makes me feel that all is well because he means so well and resting in our true feminine design is the emanation of that and what that does to our partners to our communities to our families to to the children yeah I spoke these words when I was in a a session with my somatics uh somatic experiencing therapist so I just when you were speaking to it the words were surrendered surrendered and stable soft and supported and when you were speaking to all of that they just like popped in my head because it's like surrendered and soft but still with that like support because knowing that we're being held by the highest God, you know, it's like you can be soft because you know you're fully supported. Yeah. yeah. As you were saying these words, my 
my hips just went so wide and my belly expanded even more. It's, it's so beautiful. This like, yeah, stable provided for the body feels safe to expand, to be bigger, to take up space. And so much of our holding and contraction comes from needing, needing to, to create that where we cannot create yeah. that. And it's, it's first in, in, in the arms of God. Yeah. yeah. Such a deep peace, such a deep longing for the feminine. Yeah. Yeah. To know that we don't have to do it all on our own and we can be fully supported and held from God by God. What is the original template of the masculine of a man look like? What comes initially is, is him too walking with God and naturally being brought into the qualities, his true nature as, you know, I could list the qualities that we all know about integrated, embodied masculine. And it's dad, it's, it's the provider, it's, it's the warrior, it's his posture as the protector as the man of, of mission who is in his own way in service to God, in his own way, which can look very different to what we think service to God is. It's, there's a one-pointedness. There's a focus. There's a directionality in his gaze, in, his, in where his energy goes. And it's, it's towards God and it's towards his mission. It's towards the feminine, his, his wife, partner, that union, the, the family unit, to be in protection of that. Yeah, it's interesting you're asking this. I'm like, well, I'm so connected to the feminine. And as I'm being called to feel into the masculine, the, the, the opposite pole of the, the completion it it takes it takes some time yeah it's beautiful to feel yeah feel that yeah i heard it expressed one time as like the masculine faces forward and the feminine falls back uh -huh. or like leans back like yeah and i was like that's so perfect and true in such a small statement it does speak to yeah you know because we can instantly our, feel it in our bodies what that is yeah. I know how yeah. leaning back feels, how good it feels, but I also know how it's not truly fully possible without without the man and how so much of our gifts, our, our God-given gifts can only be in full expression and thriving and blossoming in union. Yeah. Are there any books that you recommend for people who are starting on this path of sinking into their true nature as women. Definitely Alison Armstrong. I know she was on your podcast. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's done powerful work in the realms of just, I'd say polarity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. calling us into our true design through in, in such an easeful way, humorous way effortless seemingly effortless way but in a way that's so easily to understand and digest and receive yeah. um and the bible truly bible is codes <laughs> codes for for relationship and marriage as well especially proverbs yeah it's all it's all in there it's actually yeah the the more we walk with god the more he will he, he will make things clear relationally that so that these external pieces that we seek as like love languages and all of, all of the things that we try to seek to make sense of things and describe ourselves and describe the other and make it better with time. I found that they, for me personally, lost meaning because if I, if I rest in who God wants me to be as a daughter first, as a bride second, all of this is just information that's out there. Yeah. 
I think it's like the word clutter just comes up where it's like yeah. almost when I was speaking to when I was in the new age world and there were all these pulls in every which direction about astrology and Akashic records and all of that, all those things that you were just speaking to, it's just noise and clutter as opposed to just like resting in our true nature. Yeah. yeah. What does the work look like that you, that you offer women or how do you work with people? Mm-hmm. Well, the physical, the, the material is, is I'm currently offering a group space. It's called contained. It came from this season of realizing how much containment I needed and how in the new age world, even the terminology, it's the universe, spirits, source, Gaia, etc. And it wasn't enough at some point. I, I, I needed the containment of God, one God. Yeah. And so that's the work I do. That's the work that lights me up is within, within this container contained. It's a five-month walk together to restore our relationship to God, to deepen our relationship to God through restoring, erecting the, yeah, he, the, the Father principle within ourselves. Um, with that healing and restoring, repairing our relationship to the masculine and touching our, through, through that, our oracular nature, there's a lot of depth and vi- wisdom that becomes accessible and available to us that we source from our relationship to God where we don't need these external pieces. And specifically that container is preparation for holy union that is rooted in God. And big part of this work too is to remove any fantasies that we might have of union because we... <laughs> was a journey for me as well to take the beloved on the pedestal with somewhere there and see him as a human eye to eye, a mortal man who will fuck up, who will do the wrong thing, who will say the wrong thing. But are we walking with God? And in order to come to this place to embrace a man in this way, to call God into the center of a union, we first have to know how his voice feels in our system, how it is to walk with him. And so this, this space specifically is a five-month walk to strengthen our relationship to God. And so we recognize when a man of God stands before us. All men are men of God in their own way, but our my, my man that God is placing into my field Um And I was teaching business in the past, feminine business. I feel I, I, I was thriving and received so just so much nourishment from supporting women in bringing their gifts out into the world and making money from it until I realized that with my deeper return to God and Christ, that I cannot teach business anymore if women are not rooted in that relationship because distortion will inevitably be at play. We cannot serve God when we are also serving the ego and we have to be walking with him in order to rightfully serve and not otherwise all of our patterns will be at play which which was my journey my work is always a mirror for my own walk and my own path and it was to 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 seek and to make more and the next launch has to be more and kind of boss babe attitude to realize how much i cannot teach these spaces it's not it wouldn't be of integrity anymore. So I, I paused teaching business and it's slowly returning, but it's still a template that is so young and so fragile and so in its budding moments, what it truly means to serve when our wounds are not at play. Mm, yeah. That word containment really stood out because I know when I was in the new age world, some of my mentors, like more in the Akashic realms would say like a container keeps you limited. You know, you want to bust out of the container kind of thing and you don't need a container. And it's like, we need containers. We need that like structure and stability and a lot of what 
is seemingly going on in the world is because there isn't that containment. There's just chaos. And so that like container, because what a beautiful feeling to feel held and supported and stable and, you know, contained. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, even showed with my return back to Bali in September last year, I've been coming for the past couple of years on and off and I had a beautiful gorgeous big house last year when I left Bali and it was so big that I felt uncontained and I felt unsafe and I didn't sleep very well my nervous system was just frazzled all the time and even though it was so beautiful it didn't hold me and so when I returned in September last year I have a very contained space right now and it's a third of the size of the previous house but I feel so at peace and Initially, I was like, it's a downgrade, and you've lived in such beautiful houses before, in big houses, and I enjoy the spaciousness, but I realized with that that deeper descent into my my woman, different needs come alive, and it's the containment in the home, it's big sounds coming from the jungle, I'm just looking out, There's, there's so much, there's so much going on. And noticing how when I was in my 20s, everything was like, yeah, whatever, let's go travel here, travel there, all over the world. And how that's absolutely impossible for me at the moment. It doesn't feel right. I feel I need more more protection, more safety, more planning, more containment that expresses in so many ways. And yeah. to not see that as, as weakness or as something or is a step back, but but that is actually the forward because that brings us closer to a true nature, which is I want a protector as a man. I don't want a man who, um, where I emanate this attitude of like, I, I got myself, it's all good. I don't need anyone. I do all the things on my own. I actually don't want to do all the things on my own. And that's been quite beautiful. There's, there's, there's a felt tenderness in that. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Is there anything on your heart that you want to share before we close? What's been your biggest lesson in love? In love? Oh, so many. Recent lesson from my last relationship last year, which is more so a realization about myself and a, and a piece I've been contemplating quite <laughs> a lot about is the difference between mothering and the nurturing feminine. Mm. And to see where I was mothering and I wasn't aware of it, how that looks like. And sitting with what is what is an emanation of nurturing feminine presence that a masculine feels invited into and, and nourished by. And that was a big lesson to, to scan through all the mothering behaviors that I was bringing and making it about the man, right? Like Mm. he's not leading, he's not doing that. When essentially if I come with the energy of I already know better, he's not inspired to lead. Mm. So that was a big piece and beautiful. And I'm so grateful for having uncovered that and really set with that and big, big, big lesson in love. Can you... Um, kind of explain what the mothering woman looks like and what the nurturing woman looks like? Mm. The mothering woman would, it's, it's first an internal posture of feeling quite insecure and feeling mistrusting towards God in life. This is where it all comes back to, because if I don't trust God, I will not trust my man and vice versa. And so from that place, behavior comes through, like correcting him, needing to be his coach, um, knowing better, preparing his food, his, and, and it can come or, or the same one in the same action can come from a nurturing, loving place and from a mothering place. So if I'm like, oh, he's not going to make his food, so I'm going to make it, or he's not going to do the laundry anyways and roll my eyes, so I'm going to do it. I can also do the laundry from a deeply devotional place of care. And that that is not mothering, but it's mothering when I'm, I think he's incapable. 
it's entitlement comes in a mixture as well. It's seeing him as less in a way, as a protection, as protection, as ooh, unwillingness to surrender. And it could be that within the dynamic, it is unsafe to surrender, but then not mothering is the solution, but stepping out or, or bringing that into conversation. And I feel that's so alive for many women who long to be led by, by their man and long to surrender is where are we actually not even invitation for him to step into that? Where are we not creating the spaciousness so he can lead, so he can step into that? And often it is, it is in our leaning back where that can begin to happen, that dance can begin to happen. And it's all that, it's very easy for us to spot within our bodies because our body will contract. It will feel contracting when I'm in mothering qualities. It will feel like this controlling energy within me. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why the walk with God will will initiate and refine our hearts in a way where we we will be able to bring and and that's more the qualities of the nurturing feminine is is a loving presence that comes from overflow and we have to be in self responsibility to know what it is that i need so i can give from that place so i can show up from from a place of rest and the journey in yeah our mat- maturity yeah. Beautiful. Do you have anything on your heart that you want to share before we close? I feel so beautifully complete. Okay. Beautiful. Can you share where everybody can find you? Mm-hmm. My work you can find on Instagram and my Instagram name is portal to grace. It's portal underscore to underscore grace. And I also have an email list that I nurture and feed. So in my bio, there is also, you can subscribe to my emails. Yeah. Beautiful. And it'll be in the show notes where everybody can reach out for you. Thank you for this conversation. It was really beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me for an episode of the Phoenix Rising podcast. Please like, share, download, subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. And I will see you next week for another episode on the Phoenix Rising podcast. Sending so much love.